SMD Law is the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Check them out on the interwebs at smdalaw.com or at 866-529-3537. No matter where you are in the state of Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, it doesn't matter. They have an office near you. So whether you need to send a letter to an annoying neighbor, or you're a criminal and you need defense, maybe you just have problems with elder law. Check them out, smdalaw.com today. The official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Call them first, then you act. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back, Spartan Nation. So we now bring in the one, the only, the godfather of gossip in Gotham. We're bringing in the great Matt Halatic, the chief purveyor of the spun.com the best sports aggregate site on the web how you doing there matthew always a pleasure to be on with you hondo i'm uh, i'm doing well how you doing good man we got a lot to talk about football's in full force isn't it yes it is we're getting getting close to the uh close to kickoff less, uh, less than two weeks so let's start with alabama starting linebacker likely out for the season big hit for bama yeah, this is, you know, obviously Bama is known for depth, yeah, um, particularly on defense where it seems like they've replaced one five star with another. But Josh McMillan, uh, one of the projected starting linebackers, is reportedly going to be out for the season. Might be a slim chance they get him back at some point, but, you know, right now it looks like he could be out for the entire 2019 campaign. Um, obviously, you know, Alabama has lost, uh, Iyabi Anoma a couple of, weeks ago transferred out or and Nick Saban said he was actually um, dismissed from school so they're, they're missing a little bit of depth at the, the linebacker position. Let me ask you this one. Uh, one of the things I loved was a story you guys had about the ACC coaches anonymously talking about Clemson and man they had a lot of praise. Yeah I mean who can really blame them? I mean Clemson is looks like they are just going to be absolutely loaded this year and when you look at what um, as what some of the coaches said, they said Trevor Lawrence is smarter than he should be at this point in his career. He looks like a pro. Brent Venable should be a, you know, a head coach at this point, even instead of being a, a defensive coordinator. And they called Clemson being on that SEC level. Uh, this was all in Athlon preview. And I really can't disagree with any of that. I think that, you know, we've talked about how Clemson has established itself as on par with Bama. It's Clemson and Bama, not just Bama and everybody else in college football. Hmm. Another story that you guys had that I really liked and thought was good uh, was a that a little bit surprised me a little bit, if you want to know the truth. But, I, again, I thought it was a really good one. Texas has a significant injury, and Kirk Johnson, the running back, that's not good for Herman. Not, not good at all. We're talking about Texas. Texas to make a big jump. This year, and uh, you're talking about a key contributor hurt in training camp. Uh, the offense is supposed to carry that team, uh, at least until the defense you know, you know, kind of gets acclimated. They, they lost a lot of defensive starters. Of course, they had their quarterback back in Ellinger, but you know, losing a, a running back is not, not good at this point in the summer. A recent formula ranked college football's 25 greatest programs of all time. Were you shocked by the list? I was not shocked by the list. I think when you look at it, about college football, football news and, and their formula was they took every AP poll from the beginning of the 1935 season through the end of the 2018 season, and they assigned point totals to where you were ranked uh, in innings call off. I was a little surprised that um, maybe just because you're going off of what a reach be biased when you think about it, Oklahoma was number one. But when you consider the fact that Oklahoma has won, won national championships in, you know, in, in 2000, they won in the 80s, they won in the 70s, going back in the 50s, they had a 50-something game win streak. Uh, it, it, I wasn't necessarily expecting to see Oklahoma, but it, it does make sense when you take a step back and think about it. So Oklahoma was number one. Was there any surprises for you when you looked at the top ten? Penn State surprised me a little bit, but that's only because they struggled in Joe at the end of Joe Pa's career, and they have been nothing since he left. But because it's over the history, I get it. 
So to me, there just really wasn't a whole lot of surprises. My Michigan State was at 18. I was a little ex that didn't surprise me. I was surprised to see Arkansas at 19, Washington at 21, Wisconsin at 23, and Georgia Tech at 25. Was there any surprises to you? I think when you look in the top 10, and we, we touched on you know recent thinking about the way things have gone recently. It was a little bit of a surprise to me to see Tennessee still in the top ten. Because um, you think about what Tennessee's kind of how they've fallen off the last 15 or so years, and it's been about 20 years since they've 20 years since they won a national championship. Um, you, you don't talk about Tennessee the way that they that they used to be, but when you look at that stat and see that they are ten by that formula, it really you know, lets you know and reminds you just how good they were, how consistent they were for a long period of time and how they were, you know, a, a national program, top five, top ten almost every season. So Tennessee was a little bit surprising. Um, I, I felt like what you said about Penn State, too, um, just because they did fall off a little bit at the end of the Joe Pye era, even though they've had uh, a lot of success ranking-wise the past couple of years under James Franklin. Uh, but Tennessee stood out to me in the top ten. I want to talk to you about the Georgia Southern quarterback who got arrested for allegedly having cocaine. He strongly denied it, told everyone, hey, it isn't cocaine at all. It's actually bird poop. He said, hey, it's not cocaine. It's bird poop. But he still got arrested. Then the charges were dropped. What happened? Yeah, it was the video came out of the arrest of what happened. He got stopped, and the police thought that there was cocaine residue on his uh you know, front hood of his car, and he was like, no, it's, you know, it's bird droppings, and he was adamant about it, um, and they, they actually, after, I guess, looking through the process of the arrest and, and testing whatever was on the car, it, it wasn't even selling coke, it was not coke, it was, it was bird, it was bird poop, so the kid, Sh Shy Works, his name is, uh, avoided a uh, really me potentially messy situation, and it's good to see that, you know, when when the dust settled, he was telling the truth, and, and nothing bad came out of it. An ESPN analyst, Greg McElroy, names his breakout coach this year. Who was it? Greg McElroy. Um, hold on, I'm sorry. What, what was the headline again? Greg McElroy and names a breakout coach. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, yeah, I, and you know, Greg McElroy is somebody who has, over the past you know couple of years at ESPN, he's not shied away from being controversial and, and kind of you know, making his opinion known. So he goes out and he's a breakout coach this year, and I don't think this one is, is too, too controversial, too crazy. He said Scott Frost. Um, I think that's honestly a pretty painful thing. It's what we've talk about we, we feel that Scott Frost is going to get the job done there in Nebraska. Uh, the only question is, is too much expected of him this season? So uh, I thought when you consider some of the opinions Greg McElroy's had in recent years, uh, recent months on ESPN, this was a pretty tame one. Uh, I don't have a problem with it at all. Interesting. Two Big Ten coaches are already feuding ahead of the 2019 season. This is really interesting and fascinating when you – Consider where these guys came from. It's uh, Josh Gaddis, who's now at Michigan, and Mike Loxley is the head coach now at at Maryland. And these guys are, have came from Alabama, came from Nick Saban's staff, worked together there, and it, it's the genesis of it seems to be Mike Loxley commented on Josh Gaddis's inexperience as you know a a play caller and how that may come into play this year at the OC in Michigan. Gaddis fired back and said, hey, you know, you were maybe calling plays, but I put together all the game plans. I did a lot at Alabama. Uh, and it's just been a little bit of a back and forth. Obviously, these guys know each other, I'm sure, from before they were at Bama. They know each other from being on the same staff. And it will make that Michigan-Maryland matchup a little bit more interesting. I think Michigan will be the easy favorite in that game, but it, it'll make things at least a little bit, you know, a little bit more juiced up. Are you surprised because at Alabama, Saban teaches guys how to shut their mouth? 
that's, I think, the most in- interesting aspect of this, because you wonder how long this kind of brewed under, you know, you wonder if this was something that was brewing below the surface at Bama. Uh, we've heard it mentioned since they got blown out against Clemson about all the assistants leaving and the turnover and, you know, where there's some issues with the staff and things like that. And now you, this, this happens and you wonder if it was something that was brewing before these guys left and took their new jobs. Interesting stuff. Lastly, I want to ask you, Ryan Day says nobody's won the starting quarterback job at Ohio State. Do you actually believe that? I know he's got to say it, but I don't believe it. I, I really don't believe it too much yet. I, 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 I think I just can't see any way that the starter is not Justin Fields. I think that this kind of buys you know, Ryan Day the ability to say, uh, hey, you know, Justin Fields really earned the job. He took it, you know, from his competitors. It doesn't, you know, the players, you can't BS the players. The players know, the players have to know that, you know, this is Justin Fields' job to lose uh, by almost every estimation. But this is just a way for Ryan Day to kind of keep it honest and, and maybe get more out of Justin Fields than he's gotten so far. Um, Matt, um, Nick Saban has come out and said he wants Alabama to play 10 Power 5 schools from now on. What do you think of, of Nick's comment? I think for, as a fan standpoint, um, and as someone that covers the sport, I think that it, it would be great to see them test, um, you know, test themselves with, with 10 Power 5 teams. Uh, and the, obviously, you know, this year they're doing that by playing their, their 10th Power 5 game is against Duke, which isn't necessarily a big challenge. Uh, I think that it's great, you know, great for college football, great for um, the, the playoff, and great for that system to have Alabama be tested and have these other schools get a chance to play them. So I'm all for it. Um, I think you, that's why you're seeing Alabama in, in upcoming years. They have a series scheduled against Oklahoma and Wisconsin and Notre Dame and a few others, and I think that that's, that's great. I think that the more marquee matches you can get, the better. I know some people are a little bit afraid of how much weight one of those games can carry because it could really make or break your playoff resume. And it, they usually happen earlier in the season. But that also leads into another quick point I'll make. I think when you see teams scheduling like this and putting it on their non-conference, they're doing so knowing that the playoff criteria might change and the playoff itself might, might expand and look a little different in a couple of years. Dabo Sweeney is a very well-respected coach. Some people think he's a little too easy, but now there's reports that the suspended Clemson players, uh, the three players that didn't get to play, could go ringless. What do you think of that? You know, I don't know how, how I feel uh, – uh, about that, I kind of get the Kelly Bryant thing. Um, even though, you know, listen, I I don't have a real strong feeling either way about the Kelly Bryant thing. I think that uh, I I think he I feel like he, he deserves the ring, but at the same time, I understand why Dabo may not give it to him because he did transfer out this season. He didn't stay with the team for the entire uh, 2018 season. As for the suspended players, and I know that. They didn't play in the college football playoff. I know you could say, hey, you know, the responsibility to your team um, to not get suspended or, or you know, make sure you're on the field. But, you know, these are guys, in the case of a Dexter Lawrence, who was one of your best players all year. Uh, he stayed with the team the whole time. Uh, I think a guy like that definitely deserves to have a ring to be a part of what comes in the conference. Who is going to be the surprise team in college football this year? Wait, wait. Surprise team because they do well. Hmm. Okay. Let me go through in my – I'm going through my mind, my top 25, and just kind of had, uh, you know, when I had teams and, and what I had them doing. Uh, you know, I'm going to go I, – I had them as the, the final team in my top 25, and I, I think I've seen them ranked – in other publications, a couple other publications, but also outside the top 25, I feel like more did not uh, Miami. I think the, the possibility is there for Miami 
as long as, assuming Dave Martell wins that job and he plays how he's capable and does a good enough job um, this year with the offense, I think the defense is there in Miami for them to win a bunch of games and to be in the mix uh, in to win their division in the ACC. So I, I'm going to go with Miami. Who's going to be the biggest surprise negatively? Off the top of my head, I'm going through. Uh, you know, I think even though I had this team rated pretty highly, uh, I, and I don't know if it, I'm not saying that they're going to – I can see them going 7-5, maybe 8-4. Texas a and And I don't think that's necessarily anything – an indictment of the players or an indictment of Jimbo Fisher, I think they might be a year away because their schedule this year is so hard. I'm gonna give it's, you the I'm gonna give you my quick predictions. I think the team that's gonna surprise a lot of people is gonna be Michigan State, because I think they're gonna beat Michigan. I think they're gonna finish second in the Big Ten East, and I think they're gonna go eleven and one. And I'm also gonna tell you the biggest surprise is gonna be Florida State, and they will go through and fire the entire coaching staff at the end of the year. Remember, you heard it here, Matthew. He is Matt Halatic from thespun.com. We'll be back after this on the Spartan Nation Radio Network. Nation Radio Network. Nation 